Slutty vegan. vegan. We just promoted him. Mm-hmm. Vegetarian. And we are <laughs> back. It is Speaking with Gravity, a mental health podcast <laughs> where we talk about mental health. I am Curvin. I'm D. And I'm Ty. I'm Joshua. I'm Garvey. I'm all of the above. Y'all ain't heard that song? Please do not sing. No more in the intro. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's my intro. Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. So we are a mental health podcast to talk about how mental health affects everything. Everything affects everything. Um, we are therapists, but this isn't therapy. It's a podcast. And today... We're going to talk about intention and the impact of microaggressions. Mm. Typically, we do uh, a Twitter discussion and uh, a QD of an hour, but this time I was slack. I didn't get the information. And so, therefore, we're going to go straight into the, the, the episode um, with the, the, the introduction. Um, so, here we go. So the term microaggression was coined by Harvard Medical School psychiatrist Chester Pierce in the 70s. He described microaggressions as subtle insults he saw that happened between black and white students. In recent years, this word has become back has come back to the forefront and begun to start tremendous conversation, research, and debate. And shout out to uh, Mr. Pierce, Dr. Pierce, I don't know. I know he's an African American psychiatrist. Okay. Um, I did do a little bit of uh, research on him uh, back in the day. I think I even did a paper on him at some point, um, <laughs> but not recently. But um, <laughs> definitely want to shout him out for coming to this uh, microaggression. So, what is uh, microaggression? Do y'all want me to um, start it, or somebody got that? What is microaggression? For the people in the back that don't know what microaggression is. I'm fine with you starting it. All right. It's, um, I'm not going to read what I got on here. But it's anything, um, it's where you look at, to me, huh, how do I want to say it? I'll say it in my way. In my way, it's like you understanding a stereotype or having a stereotype and placing that on me because I'm associated with that group or I am that group. Okay. Um, whether it's intentional or unintentional. <laughs> uh, I think I might have said this on, on a previous episode, um, but I had a person tell me one time, Kervin, I forget you black until you say the B word. And I was like, the B word? I'm thinking he's talking about B-I-B-I-T-C-H, right? And he was like, oh, no, I'm not talking about that. Black people always say, I be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They put B in front of whatever. <laughs> it's funny, right? Oh. It was funny, and I laughed in the moment. But then I went back and was like, yo, he just threw mad. And this word shade wasn't out at the time that this happened, but he just <laughs> did mad shade at me. He threw real mad shade at me. But yeah. that's, that's a microaggression that... To say, I forget you're a black until you say that. Like, so what are you saying? Ultimately, what are you saying about me? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it made me feel some type of way after the fact. But that would be, you know, an, an example of microaggression. So, so what's the difference in micro and macroaggressions? Are you familiar with macroaggressions? Let no. me look it up. Okay. Yes, I am <laughs> familiar with it. But... Uh, I'm going to look it up so I don't mess that up. I, would I assume think mi- micro is more direct. Yeah. So as you as an individual, microaggressions is the generalization about all people. So more of a, like a um, a group of individuals. So it, it, that's the difference between macro. Is you generalize or make these aggressions towards all black people mm. versus a direct aggression against me because I'm the individual. Um, so it's a concept towards me. There you go. Yeah. yeah. You could tell who made the A's in school, right? Yeah, I should have asked her. Not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, 
All right, so with that, obviously they can be harmful, right? Have y'all had any experience? I just gave y'all one of mine. Have y'all ever had an experience? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You want to share? Go ahead. Sorry. I'm, I want to share mine. For me, um, it was very subtle, but it was, oh, I like your hair like that. And my hair was straightened. Prior to that, my hair was in an afro. Oh, you didn't and like, so didn't me, like that, huh? No, and so for me, it was like, well, I like my hair kinky and coily, and this straightness probably won't last, but thank you for the compliment. So I took did it, and that's not, that? I did. Uh. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think they were, it was probably, it was unintentional because they were just giving me a compliment, but for me, it's like you have yet to give me a compliment when my hair is in a fro, which is pretty much majority of the time while I'm here. This is before the transition of the locks, as you all can see. Um, but yeah, that was that was one experience that I can remember vividly. But I'm probably sure I've had other exposures, and it just went over my head. Um, but yeah, but I did speak on it. Um, I should have known you spoke on it. <laughs> um, I, I had a friend one time. Uh, he, he called me, and uh, it's a, a white friend of mine. It's really cool, um, and he he thought it was. He he asked me. Was he the was he the type of white guy? Where it was okay for him to say the N word? Huh? Yeah, <coughs> yeah. And I was like, no, no. Yeah, like no, no, you're not. That like that that exists, you know. Um, but yeah, that was uh, to to me that could be considered a a, a microaggression. Um, just thinking that 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 my blackness that that he. Uh, with him assuming that him being my friend, you know, could allow him to, you know, infiltrate my blackness. Yeah. Say say something. <laughs> infiltrate my blackness. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, that's t to me that was a microaggression, uh, and that's what immediately came to mind. Like Taisha say, I'm I'm sure there are plenty of others. I know there are, I know there are others, but uh, that was a pretty overt one to me. I, I think I I think I probably get um. Thinking about our other episodes, uh, episode we had two, I guess two episodes ago when we were talking about um, ugly. Professionalism? Poli professionalism. I think I probably get there more often because of how I present myself. Um, I'm, I try to be non-confrontational, right? And so uh, in trying to be non-confrontational, I may come off as soft, weak, maybe to somebody, and they're more apt to share things with me that they wouldn't share with, say, a Taisha who's going to confront them okay, yeah. <laughs> in the moment. Uh, another incident that I had, and, and this was in undergrad, was when the movie Love Jones came out, mm -hmm. and I watched it. And you know, this is why I don't like having these discussions. I was talking about how I really enjoyed the movie, I loved the movie, and I was talking into it with a white um, uh co-worker and they was like yeah but you know that that movie is not really real like that can't happen because all the people that all the characters that was in the movie and she said <coughs> all the characters w that were in the movie those they have jobs that are not that y'all don't normally have that's a big one right that's right. a big that, micro now my, i'm in undergrad and i it took me that's probably my that was probably my first experience like i was like i she just said this out loud and the way that I handled it at that time was I shut down. I didn't say anything. And uh, she was actually my manager. So she, I think, knew at that time that she had said something wrong because she kept coming back, are you OK? Uh, did I do anything? And I was like, I'm, I'm good. Uh, but that messed up, quote unquote, our relationship from that point on. Like I didn't, I don't even, I might have stayed there like three more months, four more months. I was a set, shoe salesman at Rack Room. Uh, <laughs> she's probably not there anymore. Uh, <laughs> she might be. She might be. Um, and I do not want to press charges or bring that back up. I don't want that girl to lose her job or anything because that was a moment in time back then. But yeah, she definitely caught me off guard with that. And that was probably my very first experience, and I never forgot that one. And I also was mad at myself for not saying that to, in that moment. Um, if, for people that don't know that movie, I think there was a, a writer in there, there was a teacher in there, uh, a musician. I don't know, they had a bunch of other stuff that was in there. 
but I've seen a lot of those. I've seen a lot of those people in person, live, and in, in real life that had the same type job. So obviously that wasn't the case, but that was her making a statement. Macroaggression, microaggression. It wasn't the right statement to make. And it's um, very. It's not factual either, because if you go back in time and look right. at, you know, other. Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh. I don't even want to use the word successful because success is, <coughs> you know, defined by each individual differently. But mm-hmm. other, I guess, pivotal black individuals within our community, mm-hmm. we've had educators for a long period of time. We've had musicians for an extended period of time. We've had writers for mm-hmm. an extended period of time. So I just think that comes from lack of knowledge and education. And James Baldwin's one of my favorite writers of all See? time. Yeah. She didn't know what she was talking about. You ever had any? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would make me omit, omit it for? Oh. <laughs> I guess, um, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, we I think, deal with it all the time, huh? As, oh, no. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I, 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 if I do, I, I, maybe I'm just not aware of them as much as I was before. I think the first one or the one that stands out the most to me was um, an individual said, oh, you are really smart. Um, and so, you oh, know, I had, I had that one my response was, what gave you, whatever gave you the impression that I wasn't? And so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's just, um, just certain little comments of that nature or where individuals will ch- kind of check, you know, or, um, fact check information that I give them. And it used to be where I would be like, what are you doing? I just told you this, but now it's just kind of like. Okay, where's your own D time? Like I don't care nothing about that. But it's it's those little things. Like if 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 I say something, it's not it's not good enough. You have to hear it from other people um, <laughs> before it becomes factual. And so I think that's the biggest microaggression of all times is, uh, you know, in some way or some value, in some way or some value. I, it's just what I say is not good enough. Uh, when, when, <laughs> when you said that about what you say is not good enough, I remember being an undergrad, a diagnosis class, diagnosis and treatment uh, class, and you know, or at least for my class, all we did was do cases mm-hmm. and diagnose people. And uh, I remember a whole weekend, because we had to go, this particular class, I was doing it on the weekend. I was with this one group. The <coughs> whole day, I was given the diagnosis. Every time we would come back, the professor was like, oh, this, is, was the, this was the diagnosis, and my diagnosis was right. But for the first four times, they wouldn't accept my diagnosis. I would tell them what it was, and it was like, no, and they would go with something else. And finally, one girl was like, Kervin's been right every single time, and y'all always ignore him, and she wasn't of my persuasion. Like, yeah. she, and then it was like, yeah, I guess we'll go with him. And then the fifth time, I was right. And then after that, everybody just started looking around at me. What's the diagnosis? <laughs> but you just wouldn't listen to me. Mm-hmm. And they didn't say anything, you know, off kilter or like just mess it up or whatever for me. But they just wouldn't acknowledge that. They really wouldn't acknowledge what my input was mm-hmm. up until I was perfect. Up until I was perfect. And then, you, then you're going to say, oh, okay, we can kind of listen to him now. Let me ask y'all something. Y'all ever had those moments where people, um, people say stuff like people of another uh, race say things um, that's considered black culture, like, um, and, and you can tell like that they're um, that they're trying to maybe trying to be funny, maybe they're just trying to um, make the moment seem cool in the moment, and they might be like, um, uh, you would never expect them to do this, but they say. <laughs> High five, my dog, or something like that. You feel me? Like, yeah, or they yeah, say, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, something crazy. Dude, how do y'all feel in those moments? Because I feel like that can be considered a, a microaggression. But how do y'all feel in those moments? Like, do y'all feel as though um, that going along with that is like, does you a disservice? I, I think, I don't, I think it could <sighs> be a microaggression. Maybe it could be a disservice because what they're telling me in that moment is the only way I can connect with you is for me to give you this slang language or what I've seen on TV. Right. Or what I saw somebody else do, one of you guys do to each other. So the only way I can connect with you is to be like that. Oh, what they call that? Is it panhandling? 
when like they when people on the street. not panhandling, not gaslighting. When they say the uh, the politicians are uh, talking to a, a certain group of people and they talk in their language or in their way. Oh, so yeah. say for pandering, pandering. Mm. That's what it is. So like uh, if a politician go and get some fried chicken. <laughs> then he want to get the black vote. <laughs> I have been hey, is that a microaggression to y'all? Though? Not to me. Not really. What you mean? I don't feel like somebody saying high five my dog is, is considered oh, a okay, mi- okay, microaggression okay. for me because it doesn't directly oppress me in any way and it doesn't cause any type of affliction to me. So I'm not, I'm not. I, it doesn't create any stressful environment. Like I'm just, I'm probably more than likely looking at them like they stupid. But yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't in any way cause me to be like I can't do my job or I can't perform a certain way because of it. I feel like when you're talking about Michael aggressions like it's a direct influence to how I'm able to conduct myself because of the working environment that is cr- creating for me. Uh, now if you know, you're, say, for instance, you like, what's up my end, right, no. every other day. Like, that to me is considered microaggressions. Like, well, what's the what's the problem with me using it? You all use it. Like, to me, that is an intentional microaggression because you know the offense of that word and what I have to do to kind of control myself because you know the nature and it, it, it is used differently. You know what I'm saying? And the, the communication about it, whether you choose to use that word or not, but just as an example. So, What's up, my daughter? I don't really care about that because I just I, like, like you're stupid. Either either I'm gonna speak to you or I'm not. And my nine times out of ten, if you did that, I'm just gonna turn my back to you and you'd be like, "Oh, she acting funny." Yeah, so, to you, so like, man, your fifty year old Caucasian boss does that to you. I'm gonna are, look at him like he's. Are, are you gonna give him five? Are you gonna give him five? So, so let me tell you about D. I don't. You're not gonna give him five? No, I don't. One so thing about me, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. What you, what you want to do? I want to know, like, real quick. Let me tell you. Moment. I'm going to look at him like he's stupid. This is the God's. Un- the, I don't get intimidated by people in power anymore because I just understand now. Anywhere I am in any environment, I have the ability to remove myself. Like, I have choice in the situation. So, you coming to me, what was the purpose? And I may even ask him, what was your purpose? Like, I I don't mind challenging someone in that way because I think that's how we create change. What we don't do is when we just, <laughs> I don't no, do the no, little subtle, right. like. But he I, is trying to connect, though. Like, okay, well, connect with me connect. a different way. If he okay. want to connect with me, he better bring me a, a, a plate of some chicken wings and fries or something. Like, he got to do something <laughs> that I can connect with. Like, I, that don't, yeah, high five, that that don't might connect be with me. Like, you really, I mean, he got to be pro- solving a problem for me. Him speaking to me don't solve no problem. Yeah. So, yeah. I, this, I just don't, I don't see that as a way of connecting with me and saying hey to somebody. I say hey to people out of courtesy. You you saying hey to me is not you connecting with me. That's just you doing what you've been taught. I, that that doesn't create a relationship. I speak to a lot of people that I will never speak to again, and not because I don't want to, but just because I don't be around them. So that hey don't is not you talking to me. Now, now I'm gonna let you. I'm, I'm gonna let you get back oh, to yeah, your I wanna point. Yeah, I want to hear what. The, but the uh, the actual, uh, I want to make sure we say this in, in this setting. Microaggressions, the actual definition, are everyday verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights, snubs, insults, whether they are intentional or unintentional, that can communicate a hostile, derogatory, or negative message, as you say it, to target an individual. I think that might be one, y'all. Huh? Oh. What, what he just... What, um, what you, the example yeah, you gave? Yeah, I think that might be one. I don't think that that's You don't think it could be a slight? One. Um, but now what she said he better do instead of doing that, I think that would be one. So not for me. You talking about bringing the chicken in? Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, and, and she's saying it's not for her. So as an individual, it's just not going to, she's <coughs> not going to, yeah. yeah, because the way she perceived it is not. But with, and saying it like that, right, and explaining it like that, can y'all see how it would be harmful to the other side? So I'm saying that it's a microaggression. For you to bring me some chicken, and some wings, and fries, and she's saying it's not to her. So the person on the other side is like, "Wait a minute, you get offended, Kervin, but she didn't get offended." But that's when you generalize us, though, right? So that's why you learn the individual. If you know me as an individual, my favorite meal is chicken wings and fries right now. Now, as I continue to read and elevate, that may shift. But that's me as a general, and that has nothing to do about me being black. That's just what I enjoy. So when you get to know me on an individual level, 
that's you understanding that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's nothing against that. Now, if you say we order, order, you order a meal and you order everybody else salads, but you when you get to me, you order me chicken and fries. <laughs> now we got a different problem. But they know you though. They know what you like, know. See, see, that's see all right. No, that's I'm saying it's I'm saying that situation is if they did not ask me okay. about it, then you don't know me, right? Okay, so gotcha. that's a generalization. That, that is, would yeah. be you trying to, what, what you trying to say. Now, that would be a form of microaggressions. But in terms of, like, in, in any other essence, I don't I don't really see it as that way. And I think that, again, what I, what I was ultimately trying to say is you can't generalize us yeah. as individuals. You can't, even though we are all, you know, black, we are all um, bio we're not cannot, monolithic. We are not one. So you have to learn the individuals within your environment. Learn how they function and understand that that is not a representation of all. And stop generalizing us because what what may be offensive to you may not be. Somebody making a fat joke ain't offensive to you because you're not fat. So you know what I'm saying? That, that That's two different, two different outlets where somebody making a, an offensive joke about fat people to me, depending on what it is, I might find it funny, I might not. Yeah. But... You know that that's just that's just how it is. I, I can I can still see how. <clears throat> well, you care it, too much about how they gonna interpret them. I, I don't. I don't I, it's know. not it's not that I I'm care, not. but it's it's just having the thought process of knowing what's this the, person may be walking on eggshells because you got. What's I wrong know, with them having to walk on eggshells when we don't had to walk on eggshells for years? So I you want now? I, I didn't say nothing to be was wrong with was them. Clear. Clear. I y'all, I just y'all just so compassionate people. I mean, but I'm supposed right, to be compassionate, well, I am and compassionate. especially especially if I want it returned to me. I'm walking into my authentic self. I'm not. Uh, if I walking in your authentic self is violating somebody else, you're gonna continue. Well, now I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm actually jumping a little bit because yeah, I'm saying violating. You leaping. You didn't jump. <laughs> you leaping. Now just to clarify. Is there? Because <laughs> I don't know. What There's a difference about. between jumping yeah, and leaping. Leaping, is leaping. You okay. Know, a leap of faith. That's what you walking out. Of. All right. Ahead. What I was trying to say was, um, if walking in my authentic self is placing somebody in a consistent on a consistent basis at unease, should I continue to walk in my authentic? Well, that's kind of a stupid question because you should always walk in your authentic self. What is the first I'm going to say that out loud. What you should always walk in your authentic self. That we treat the individual, no matter what the condition is, no matter what the diagnosis is, you treat the individual. So in order to learn me as an individual, you have to do what? Learn you. Learn me. Therefore, you can't now, when you're first getting to know me, you may have to ask questions. And that depends on how are you intending to establish this relationship. I think what we're talking about is people who, when you're working in an environment with people over a period of time, you learn certain traits about them. I learn stuff about the people that I work with, even if I don't have conversations with them. I learned about the ways they walk. I can walk up to them and say, something's not right about you today. They be like, what do you mean? I noticed the facial structures. I know that it may be the changes in appearance. That's just who I am, and that's my observation. So I notice certain things. I may notice that when they go eat, they go off by themselves. They may go eat in their car. They may go in the lunchroom and get in their own corner. So I notice these things, not trying to learn them. That's just what I notice. And so because I know these things about them, like if I notice that every lunch period you go to yourself, you eat your lunch, and you pull out your textbook, and you're reading or studying or whatever that you're doing, I noticed that about you. I'm not going to interrupt that time, or that's not going to be the time that I want to come and talk to you about a patient or a client because I know that's your time. So I feel like when you're intentionally trying to learn people and, and get to know people, you, you manage those behaviors. But when you're just saying and doing things and really you don't know me, you do have to have somewhat of a guard, and that's, where you, that's when you don't know people. And I think we're maybe talking on two different spectrums. When I'm talking about a working environment, these are people who know me. When you don't know me, you may not know that it's a, a microaggression, and that's when you have to be educated. All right, I'm with you on that. I can't, I can't go against that. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. The main thing is learning the individual <coughs> that you're working with instead of trying to group them into a whole entire, yeah, into one being. Right. Into one being. Um, so then you would, would you say, instead of being harmful, microaggressions are an opportunity, are always an opportunity to teach. It's a teachable moment. Or you wouldn't say that either. 
it's not always up to us to continue to educate those who don't look like us on what's quote unquote appropriate, what's considered a microaggression and what isn't considered a microaggression. However, in certain instances, yeah, it is. It's, I will, me personally, I will choose to educate you. Going back to what Josh said, uh, the scenario, my boss were to come at me. I'm like, D, I'm going to look at you crazy. And I'm going to ask, did you do everybody else like that? Y'all going to do that for real. I am. Because what you're not going to do is try to switch it up just to make some type of connection with me by thinking right. or assuming that this is the right approach, especially when you didn't take that same approach with everybody else. Now, if you're doing that with everybody else, okay, cool, high five. But if you're just doing that to me to try to figure out if this is the way to connect with me, then we have a problem because I feel like it isn't genuine and you really aren't trying to establish a rapport with me. So for me, you ain't even got to speak to me. We can keep it moving. It's professional. I feel That's like it's a slight me. then. But I feel it? like it's a slight then. And again, depending on, it depends on the situation. Did you do everybody like that or just me? But if you're saying my boss comes up strictly to me and did not do that to everybody else, would I feel that as a form of microaggression? No, I'm just going to look at you like you're crazy and then ask, did you do that to everybody else? Or what was the purpose of that? And me, I probably, I don't shake everybody's hand, but nice to meet you, fist pump. And it, keep it moving. But that's. I'm going to say, how's it going, Bob? <laughs> I probably I don't know, it just depends. What's I up, dog? Like How's it going, Bob? It just it just Put her there. Like, it seemed like the, what you guys, you two in the middle, are saying is a double edged sword. Like you're saying, learn me individually, right? Um, but when in the attempt to learn you individual, individually, and they do something like that, then it's like I, right, I'm just going to ignore them. No, but I'm again, just, it depends on if you're doing that just solely to me versus everybody else. But if it's solely to me, I am going to question it because you ain't doing it to everybody else. So why did you feel so comfortable to say, what did you say? Uh, three hands up. What's dog? up, dog? Or, I'm not or, a dog. What about when uh, white people say, what's up, brother? So it's not the hand gesture. It's the words she's using. Is that what you're saying? Like, what's up, dog? It's to to me, it's both. It's I mean, both when, you, me. when you're in a professional oh. setting, I mean, most people shake hands or, you know, I mean, you, you just don't see that. And, and a lot of times when you say, what's, what's up, you know, that's when you'll see it. Well, as, I don't you see know? that when, I, when I'm not in a professional setting. I don't know. They might have went out a couple of years ago. I don't know the last time. It, I, may, it varies in my setting. Or, or, know, even, a, a or even a hand project, slap. A job you know? team, yeah. now that's something yeah. like yeah. that. But usually, hey, how you doing, how you doing, it typically does involve, especially, you know, post-COVID. Ain't nobody <laughs> shaking nobody hands yes. nowadays. So I'm really going to be like... <laughs> Hey, how you doing? But even with, so both, talk, the even, even when different. y'all talking about like this, the shaking in the hands and whatever, again, going hey. back to what I would always get coming up was, hey, brother, what's up, brother? But you ain't going to do that to another person that looks just like you. You're not going to say, what's up, brother? And now, now, there are some guys that have seen do that. And I don't feel some type of way because I know that they do that to everybody. But that's the thing. You know them. And that's the this that's why you keep saying we're a double edged sword, but we're not. I think what this conversation is saying is that us as African American individuals, sometimes we as women experience different microaggressions than you all. And how you all as men, because y'all seem to be in alliance with what y'all feel is microaggressions. And maybe we're not experiencing that because nobody's really coming to me saying, what's up? Like nobody's that's not the interaction that I'm getting. The interaction I get is the maybe the rubbing on the back. Now I don't like that. That's my thing because I just don't like for people to interrupt my personal space. I don't like so, that either. You know, there are certain things that I just don't feel like or them feeling like they have to, you know, <laughs> while they're saying something, they have to yeah. kind of pet me like I'm like they're trying to keep me calm or, you know, we don't want to upset you. I'm not upset. Don't interpret something for me because I'm projecting my voice or because I am stating the facts about the situation or because I'm asking for clarity. Like there's different things. It's like you give me an answer and just expect me to take it. You know, sometimes it is what it is, but sometimes further explain it for me. Or um, if someone comes in and gives you a situation, trust the fact that I've done everything that, I, that I'm supposed to do. And that's one of the things I think I like about my supervisor now. Um, and I've been so blessed to have her because she is not an African-American woman, but she has proven herself. She stands behind any decision that I make. And if she's uncertain about some things, she's going to ask those questions. So she's intentional about being a leader to me. And she's intentional about understanding my experience and how something makes me feel. Uh, we were at <laughs> this, oh, they ain't listening, but we were at a luncheon and, you know, one of my colleagues made a comment and like, 
I really wanted to say something, but my supervisor, she kind of just looked at me, and because she looked at me, it let me recognize how much she knows me because she recognized that if it, that, that statement alone could have really caused me to go out of, to okay. really take this to a whole nother level, but she kind of inverted and kind of just redirected the conversation and kind of kept us, you know, in a neutral environment. So she controlled it a little bit better, so I... I think it's just about the individual. And when you get to know your colleagues, when you get to know your employees, and when you intentionally develop those relationships, you you kind of break down those walls and you can learn about what's offensive and not. And so you reduce the opportunities to create um, microaggressions, in my opinion. I, I, think, we, I think we actually agree on yeah. the microaggression and macroaggression, macroaggression, but I don't think we agree on the response. And in my, if I simplified it, I think the response should be from person to person should be a little bit more consistent because when it is not, remember when we're talking about microaggression, we're talking about daily activity. It's not like isolated, like it's ongoing. This person ain't gonna know how to move. If, we're, if people are not responding uh, consistently, this person ain't gonna know how to move from day to day. And you know, we're focusing on just race, but it's more than just racial microaggression, right? We can look at it from a gender standpoint. I know not to say, oh, it must be that time of the month. That's not, that's not, that ain't cool for me to be talking about a female in that way. But if I can get away with it with this person, that person, um, I ain't gonna know whether I should say it or not. If somebody yeah. ain't got common sense, I ain't gonna yeah. know <laughs> for sure, for if sure. they should get away with it or not. But whether you say that or not is gonna be dependent upon the relationship. So, like, I have a relationship with Ty where if she acting different, I might say to her, oh, you know, it must be that time of the month for you or you might need some. So we had that type of relationship. Now, somebody else, regardless of color or whatever, I may not say that same communication mm -hmm. practice with them because I don't have that type of relationship with them. And I'm not saying... What, I don't think our responses should be the same because you don't feel the same way that I feel. So something could be classified as aggression to you and, and not to me. The purpose of learn the individual. And when you're learning the individual, that individual will to teach you how to communicate with them. Because when I am communicating at, at a micro level, I'm communicating with the individual. Now, mm -hmm. when you're talking about at a, micro, a macro. macro level, you do have to be more... And intentional and you do have to kind of think this way and you have to be attentive to your language that you're using because you're speaking to a masses of people on a macro level but we ain't talking about macro aggressions right now we're talking about micro and when we're talking about individual you have to learn the individual to determine what is offensive to that person and if that person doesn't know or are unsure about how they are approaching and an individual, whether it's a different form of race, gender, whatever the case may be, then I feel is on that individual. Let me just either come out and ask you blatantly, hey, is this offensive? And kind of am I doing this the correct way in a sense? Because again, I know you're an individual of this culture, but I just want to know ultimately how to kind of go about flowing with saying, hey, what's up, brother? Or, you know, um, yeah, because again, it's not up to me to continue to educate you on how to interact with me, get to know me on the individual level, as if you were to talk to Karen or Susan or Michael or whoever the case may be. And then, based off of my response, whether it's a nonverbal response, whether it's a facial expression that you know ultimately is like, oh, I think I may have ruffled a little feathers, let me come back and ask and just assess a little if I truly want to know. Because again, some people, they just keep it moving. Oh, well. <coughs> So it I think microaggressions are tough because you never know. I mean, sure, you get to know that person, but I mean, you want to feel free around people too, you know? And you want to be able to express yourself. Like Dee was saying earlier, a rub, on the, a, rub on the, a rub on the shoulder, rub on the back. I don't like that, but I wouldn't really see that as like a microaggression though. You know, I wouldn't see that as nobody trying to slight me. Like, I know you mentioned if you were raising your voice, maybe they could be trying to slight you because you're black and you're raising your voice. But that wouldn't, who's to say that they don't do that to everyone regardless of the race? So I just think microaggressions are really tough. Um, and I think we have to be, we have to have conversations with those people 
um, I think is the really important thing, communication. After someone does something like that, pulling them to the side. I don't care if it's your boss or whoever, but like, like y'all was saying, you know, talking about what, you know, where did this come from? What was the reason for this? And letting them know how that affects you. You know, those are, I think Kerber mentioned those teachable moments, microaggressions being those teachable moments. Those are, I think, really important teachable moments because that person in that time, they might not have, you know, they've been learning about you, but sometimes it takes tension <laughs> and conflict to really learn about somebody's do's and don'ts, what they accept, what they're not gonna accept. So I think microaggressions are kind of hard. Those moments are really, Im can be really important though, I feel. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I, I'm getting it, y'all hitting home, and I like what both of y'all are saying about this individual and taking the time to learn. As he was talking, I thought about um, there's a therapist that I'm, I'm cool with, um, or a person. I, well, he's, he's a therapist I'm cool with. And um, I was getting ready to say, no homo. Because uh, it's something that I say, or, or, and pause is something that I say. But me and him, have, we're gaining a relationship with, you know, when we talk, we good, we friends, but I had to ask, I stopped before I even said it. I was like, yo, are you good with me saying this? Can I say this? And in his situation, he was like, nah, I don't like that. Mm. But in another situation, it was cool for me to say that. And then in the same, I want to say in the same conversation, he was okay with me saying pause, but not no homo. So, but you took the initiative to ask. Yeah, yeah. You and that, that's when it hit home, like what you were saying. I took the initiative to ask because I really wanted to know, and I value the that relationship. relationship now and going forward. So, you know, it's big to, like, just really develop by asking questions and being emotionally intelligent. Like, that's how you're going to build your emotional intelligence is by asking those questions. You want to know something? In a moment like that, I wouldn't even say it. If I had to think about it like that, I wouldn't even say it. I wouldn't even ask that person. Now, if it was a, just like a free moment, that's when I would ask. <laughs> yeah, that's it, when I would it ask like. It was a free moment. I was getting ready to make a joke. But and I, saying, I was like, going to say that in conjunction with the joke. And then I was like, all right, let me ask this. And then I, I even told him, I was like, man, this is what I was going to say. And he was like, oh, no, nah, I don't like that. <laughs> right, okay. he had an awareness of him, and that's, yeah. I think that the, the, the and I'm not not to enjoy, no, you good, go ahead, not, go ahead. To, not to cut your wisdom, y'all wear that out, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 think, I think what you're talking about, my boy, go definitely trademark that, yeah, <laughs> is the importance <laughs> of again having that established relationship because you understand something about him and you understand the possibility of it being offensive, and you did see that as a learning moment. I am intentional about how I want to communicate with you. I think sometimes what microaggressions, when I think about it oftentimes in the workplace um, or in, in any other settings, is because we're not always promoting relationship. We're promoting mm. jobs. We're promoting, yeah. uh, you know, tasks. We're promoting delegation roles. of rules, roles. Yeah. And so we're not promoting relationship. We're not promoting connection. So because you're not being intentional in that mindset, microaggressions occur occur more frequently, right? But in environments where people know each other, whether it's a well-diverse environment or where a lot of people look the same, what you see is when people begin to have relationships and they understand each other, they begin to understand and learn their limits. They can have conversations, and I can say things mm -hmm. in certain ways and, and recognize if I've offended you. Why? Because I'm recognizing your body language. How I learn a person's body language is I can become attentive to that. I can see your body language and be dismissive because if you're a relationship that I don't value, that don't bother me. So it's, I think it's all about being intentional about the relationship that you're developing over time with individuals. And you can use it as a teachable moment or not. And I think that's going to determine how much is this impacting you, how, how, how hurtful is that experience to you, and does that experience deflect or impact your role or other people's roles who may look like you in the future? Intention and impact, the very, the very words that are in mm. the title, yeah. you, you summed it up yeah. like crazy good. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Intention and impact. Intention and impact. Yeah. Yeah. Just what she just said. What my summary would be what she just said, literally. Um, I don't have anything to add. Did y'all have anything else? Mm -mm. We're going to wrap this one up. Mm -hmm. I like what you said. I don't even want to mess it up like that. 
<laughs> uh, I appreciate uh, every, everybody that come in and listen to us from time to time and try to get um, knowledge on, on what we're on mental health and how everything affects everything. I'm going to go down the line again and give everybody opportunity to, to kind of um, promote what it is that they do. So tell us more. Kodak Ready Consulting. That's why I need to name this session. Tell yeah. us more. Tell us more. Kodak Ready Consulting. You can lo- find information about the services we provide at kodakreadyconsulting.com. Like, add, share us on Facebook at Kodak Ready Consultant. Having an event and you're looking for an amazing 360 experience, you can follow us on all social media platforms at 61 Event Rentals. Um, yeah. Thank you. Let's talk about it. The platform. I can scroll and scroll. So uh, let's talk about it. We hey, asked the, you to we ask the deep questions. We asked the hard questions that cause people to reflect. The questions that people want to answer. What is the meaning of life? Where do you get your peace from? What's the greatest gift you can give a child? What's the power of forgiveness? We ask these type of questions in order for people to reflect order for people to share knowledge, to share wisdom and understanding. Check us out. We're on YouTube. Link will be uh, in this episode's uh, description. So definitely check us out. Let's talk about the platform. All right. Uh, and then before I go, this time I want to shout out one of my friends from my oh, undergrad, uh, oh. Keevan Charles. He has a book called A Different Ghetto Story. So as part of your Ooh. self-care Ooh. for uh, this week right here. Let's um, go. You know, get you some tea, get you some coffee, get you something and grab that <laughs> book and read it. Um, and we got another uh, author coming up. She's working on her book right now. Shout out Let's go. to my girl right here. <laughs> Let's go. She's going to she gonna get there before I am, but she's going to push me to get there. Um, but for right now, um, go ahead and grab a different ghetto story by Keevan Charles and um, check that out. And thank you all again for coming in, uh, allowing us to come into your living room on your phone or wherever we Wherever you're listening to or whatever platform you're listening to us on, thank you for spending time with us. You can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. This is, we are therapists, but this isn't therapy. It's a podcast.